In July 2021, the Department of Health reported 1,045 new HIV infections in the Philippines. 52% of the newly infected belong to the 25 to 34 age group. Only 3% of those were infected with HIV in July 2021 were 50 and older. Based on the data, focusing on the effects of HIV on the youth seems to make sense. But what is not widely discussed, particularly in the Philippines, is how HIV is also an issue of Asia. There are many issues worth stressing here. According to the CDC in the US, in 2018, 51% of Americans with HIV were aged 50 and older. Many of them are living longer, healthier lives because of the effective HIV treatment. But with aging, health concerns surface from cardiovascular disease, diabetes, renal disease, and cancer. For trans woman Shona Luna, who knew of her HIV status in 1991, there are particular issues for those who are aging with HIV. I think sa tingin ko naman, lahat kami gusto namin mabuhay ng mahaba pa. Kaya umuho kami dun sa trial. Uh, uh, mahirap kasi ang side effect nakakaloka, lalo na 15 tablets in the morning, 15 tablet at night, tapos talagang nakaka, nakakahi, nakakahilo yung effect niya. Kailangan siguro talagang bigyan nila ng importance yung mga senior HIV positive. Kasi marami kami kailangan. Like for example, yung, yung siyempre hindi na kami bigyan ng kalakas, di ba? Or baka mamaya may, may ibigay sa aming livelihood pro- program. Kasi siyempre, lahat ng, mostly marami sa senior mag-isa na rin sa buhay. Yung ganon. Sana mabigyan nila ng concern yung, yung ano, especially livelihood. Tsaka easy access dun sa mga antibiotics. Kunwari, katulad ko, meron akong uh, underlying ano, medyo mataas yung creatinine ko. Kailangan kong bumili ng mga medicine na hindi libre sa RITM. Medyo mahal yun. Dapat bigyan kami ng mga extra, ano na, malibre yun. Also, people aged 50 and older accounted for 17% of the new HIV diagnosis in 2018 in the U.S. This is higher than 3% in the Philippines, though, maybe only because services are more readily available there. And so we talk about this, here at Paghari Talks. With us today, Iko Rodolfo Johnson, the president of the Project Red Ribbon, one of the most active non-government organizations dealing with HIV in the Philippines. So, Iko, is this issue, HIV and Asian, discussed at all in the Philippines? I have the issues had been raised even um, in uh, current dialogues and meetings. However, still there's no program for HIV in the elderly or aging. You mentioned that this was raised before. So when raised, what specific issues were raised? Okay, so specifically, uh, there are two uh, items, like the physical issues of uh, a real HIV or a person living with HIV beyond 50 years old. So the issues of, uh, you know, the common uh, problems related to aging, such as arthritis, they cannot walk anymore, which impedes their um, mobility going to and from uh, the treatment facilities. Um, Also, um, uh, heart issues related to uh, antiretroviral medicines. Uh, So these are the long-term side effects of antiretroviral medicines, uh, high cholesterol, uh, buildup in the body and heart diseases, and um, other issues such uh, such as, uh, of course, the psychosocial. So still, there is depression because as one ages um, or as one mat- matures, so still there is this struggle to be part of a community, a productive member of society, even with uh, having uh, with HIV, so um, and of of course there are also issues when it comes to relationships. Um, those who don't have uh, beyond fifty years old, they still don't have uh, a partner. So those come in uh, in the picture um, when it comes to HIV uh, among the elderly or uh, during uh, the aging process. Considering the limitation in the current responses. How do we make sure these issues were highlighted? And what do you recommend to address these issues? We have to continue um, pushing for uh, reforms 
and in inclusion in the different policies uh, in the government so that the those who are beyond 50 years old can um, um, have access to more benefits uh, for uh, people living with HIV, for them to have programs uh, related to um, the elderly, specifically for the elderly. So the, the issues of the elderly is different from the youth, the adolescent, and the adults, and even children. So we have to identify these problems and um, create more programs. What's important here is we have to continue on pushing for reforms continue talking about it so that programs can um, can uh, be made and uh, these issues can be addressed. What role should those who have injured while living with HIV play to increase awareness on these interconnected issues? And for you, are these people given the opportunity, at least locally, to raise their issues? Okay, so they have more experience, number one. So they have a big role in providing information and awareness specifically to uh, the key affected population and the general population, number one. Number two, they have more experience when it comes to the struggles uh, that they have experienced. Of course, when you talk about uh, them having HIV, most probably they have already 20, 30 years of experience, so wide, a wide range of experience in dealing with stigma and discrimination and uh, problems with, when it comes to treatment. So they have a, a, a big role in um, influencing and encouraging and making people aware about HIV. And um, number three, they have a role because um, they experience from the past uh, different problems which are still ongoing, which are still happening up to now, and they can also be the voice of the community uh, so that more people will be aware, aware and more people will be engaged to the programs of HIV. How do we then make sure they are given the opportunity to speak about their issues? Their voices need to be heard, but not only uh, during uh, talks as they need it, but they also are needed to uh, create more programs for their own population, for their own community, uh, the, the elderly community, so that uh, we would understand their struggles, we would understand that there is a silent voice that needs to be heard so that more programs can be created. So, how do we do the CSOs? And how do we then encourage the government and the CSOs to do more? Of course, of course. Because um, uh, the, the, the target, no matter what, all CSOs are aligned with the targets of the national government. And the targets are sp very, very specific. MSM, transgender, in a certain population. So, they are targeted towards the, um, uh, the age range with the highest cases. But we have to understand that uh, everybody goes to uh, that period wherein you you uh, progress, okay? You go to that direction of being old or um, going uh, beyond 50 years old. So we also need to be addressed. We also need to address those issues, uh, those uh, uh, population with different issues. So uh, I agree that uh, this is also um, part of the fault of the civil society organizations. But we have to consider also that uh, the direction of the national government needs to also direct and help the CSOs in providing light, okay, and providing um, more information more information about uh, people living with HIV that are uh, that who are belonging already in that population. So up to now, there are only numbers. Um, when you talk about the registry, you would see that there are numbers. But beyond that, we don't know. So how can we get all the metrics when it comes to uh, the quality of life of um, people living with HIV in the elderly population? So I think it's not only the civil society organizations that are at fault here, but also uh, the national government uh, that uh, doesn't have all the information that can be provided to the civil society organization. If we can work together, we can build more programs and we, we can understand the actual situation, the actual quality of life of uh, people living with HIV in the elderly community. It's more about uh, knowing them, okay? Understanding, uh, um, get, getting to uh, 
know more of them. So in, in the same way, it's, it's like uh, monitoring their uh, quality of life. We need to understand, like what I said, we need to have metrics to understand their quality of life. It can be a physical, can be a psychosocial, can be a spiritual. What's important is we understand them. We know how to gauge their quality of life. That's a problem when it comes to the, uh, people living with HIV community per se. So it's not enough for one to just take in their medicines, the antiretrovirals, but we have to ensure um, the best quality of life for each individual. However, uh, in the Philippines, there's still no gauge for quality of life. So we have to create programs so that we understand that it's beyond antiretrovirals. It's more of the life, even with HIV, that they can have a better quality of life. life. So there are lots of things that can be done. What we need to do is a sim simple step. We can, do, we can do a lot of reforms if we understand what are the struggles of uh, people living with HIV, the elderly population, if the voices of the elderly PLHIV can be heard again, and uh, can, if they can unite and have a strong position as to their needs and uh, what else they can do to help um, the society and become productive once again. In the Philippines, over 80% of the newly infected are under 35. Considering that HIV is still considered an issue that predominantly affects the young in this country, for you, is there a right time to talk about HIV and aging in the Philippines? Today is the right time. That's what I can say. Today is the right time. There's no other time but today. So we have to understand, we have to break that mentality that we just have to focus on one population alone and then forget the rest. Remember, the youth will age no matter what. Everybody, uh, every individual will age. Are we going to neg neglect them tomorrow? Are we going to forget them because we help them today? I think uh, the dialogue should start today. I believe. The movement should start today, the program should start today, the reform should start today. So we have to make sure that no matter what, we can do it today rather than tomorrow because tomorrow may be too late. Lahat tumatanda. Isa yan sa mga kasabihang madalas pangitin ng mga Pilipino. Isama natin sa kasabihang ito ang mga people living with HIV o PLHIV dahil hindi lahat ng may HIV ay agad-agad namamatay. They survive and thrive in spite of their HIV status. But the surviving and thriving can only happen if HIV-related services are provided specifically to those who are aging while living with HIV. Dahil may mga pangailangan sila na hindi natutugunan ng existing efforts. Kaalaman tungkol sa karagdatang sakit ng tumatandang may HIV, epekto ng matagalang paggamit ng air, issues related to growing old alone, at marami pang iba. Kung hindi man ito mabigyan ng agarang solusyon, kailangan itong pag-usapan bago pa lumala. And that's what we're doing here at Maghari Talks.